Hi, I'm Beryl, and the theme for today's video is breakfast. We have five breakfast dishes from five countries, so let's get started. Hi everyone, my name is Evelina. I'm from Ukraine and currently living in Denmark. The dish I wanted to share with you is uh, potted cheese bake, which in my language called serna zapikanka, but basically translates like uh, baked cottage cheese. I remember this dish from my childhood, from kindergarten, and I think many Ukrainian people out there also remember it. Basically, it's just lazy version of our uh, cottage cheesecakes called serniki. For this dish, you need only few basic ingredients. It's cottage cheese, eggs, raisins, some semolina, sugar and vanilla sugar. You just mix everything up and bake it. Serve cold or hot with condensed milk or jam or sour cream on top. I like this dish because it's easy to make, filling and has memories of my childhood. This smells so good and like, it, I'm really intrigued by this. Mm. It's like as if bread pudding and cheesecake combined to make something perfectly in the middle. <laughs> I left the raisins to plump up in water overnight and like, they're so juicy. I like raisins though. I've learned on this channel to like raisins because so many dishes have had raisins in it where I've been like, what are raisins doing in here? Now I like them. Whoa. The most important ingredient in this is the cottage cheese. And in the United States, cottage cheese is kind of like a curd in a milky, oh God, describing cottage cheese is very bizarre. But it's not the same as cottage cheese in Eastern Europe. It's more similar to a farmer's cheese that you can get at your supermarket. You could probably use Western style cottage cheese if you drained all the liquid out of it. I also think it's pretty similar to ricotta, even though ricotta cheese is a little bit sweeter. The artist behind me is Owen Rival. He is based out of Toronto, Canada. I found this piece on my Instagram homepage and reached out to him. I just loved his work. He said that he describes his art as dramatized versions of everyday life and I just loved that concept. I am leaving a link in the description to his socials and his website. Ugh, the last bite they get on my spoon. My name is Amalia. I am from Caracas, Venezuela, but I live in Spain and right now I'm in Colombia. The dish I want to talk to you about today is called arepas andinas. Arepas andinas are different from the traditional arepas that everyone might know from Venezuela. Uh, they are made with wheat flour instead of corn flour. During colonial times, wheat was only cultivated in this and this region. So this arepa was born and they are very good. They are round and doughy and very dense, slightly sweet, which goes really well with all cheeses. There's this traditional cheese that is a smoked Andean cheese as well from the Andes region. And so if you can find any kind of smoked cheese, I think it will go really well with this arepa. Alexa, set a 15 minute timer. But if not, any cheese will do even a cheddar or gouda or something like that, I think will be still amazing. The traditional will be to have it with avocado, which is really good, with chorizo, even just plain with butter or some cream cheese, it's still amazing. Um, it's not very difficult to make. I wanted to highlight something from a different region that is, wasn't as well known, but it's still something that people can make easily at home if they want to. So I've made like a little kind of breakfast sandwich out of this because I realized that's the better way I think to eat them versus putting everything on top. Mm. Ooh, I do not eat enough smoked cheeses, honestly, like yum. 
I really liked this version of arepas because often it's difficult to find the right type of cornmeal and everybody has white flour. And so I thought this was a great opportunity for a breakfast that pretty much you could replicate anywhere in the world. The bread was pretty easy to make. I had just like one little issue where I completely forgot to flour the countertop. Uh-oh. Ah! Uh, uh, what do I do? Okay, just wait there. Amateur, but you know, I am an amateur, so. <laughs> but I do feel like I'm getting better at kneading. One day I will have a machine. But in the meantime, I got these puppies. Hmm. These puppies? I don't know. They're, they are puppies. Let's just get back to my arepa and Dina. I have to say, I'm kind of impressed with myself. And this is great. I mean, avocado and smoked cheese is not a combination that I probably would have ever thought to put together. Very satisfying. Oh, I finished it. <laughs> Before we get to the next breakfast dish, let's talk about the sponsor for today's video, Catalina Crunch. Catalina Crunch has a range of products from cookies to snacks to cereals, eh? Breakfast episode. And with that in mind, I am going to be making one of my favorite breakfasts that I used to eat in college. I'm gonna be using their cereals. They have eight different flavors to choose from. I am using their cinnamon toast today. All of their flavors were inspired by nostalgic favorites from our childhood. They are keto friendly and the cereal has zero sugar. So it's low in carb, high in protein. It's less sweet than typical sugary cereals, but still sweet if that makes sense. I eat my cereal mostly with yogurt because I just have never liked how soggy cereal gets in milk. It's a personal thing, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm gonna add some fruit, gonna add some nuts, make it a complete meal. This actually looks a lot more beautiful than anything I ever made in college, but I still stand by the yogurt bowl over milk bowl. Mmm. Crunchy. Does this taste exactly like Cinnamon Toast Crunch? No. I mean, it can't. It doesn't have the same amount of sugar. It's got different ingredients, but the essence of it is there. If you're interested in trying it out, Catalina Crunch is available in over 20,000 stores nationwide here in the United States, but you can also find it online. If you order it online and use my code BARREL, it will give you 15% off your order plus free shipping. The link is in the description. Okay, this breakfast, killer. Let's try some other breakfast. Hello everyone, my name is Tanya and I come from the island of Mauritius, but I'm currently living in Germany. The breakfast dish that I want to talk about today is called Gâteau Pima. Gâteau means cake and Pima means chili in Mauritian Creole, so chili cakes in English. Gâteau Pima are deep fried balls made of yellow split peas, cumin seeds, spring onion, onion, coriander, salt, and fresh or dried chilies. I really like them because they are crunchy with a soft interior and they are also savory and a little bit spicy as well. So for breakfast, we usually spread some butter on a hot baguette and then we place a couple of the gâteau pima and then we add one or two slices of craft cheddar cheese, but you can also use shredded cheese. Gâteau pima is one of the most popular street food that you can find in Mauritius. It is sold everywhere and it is an essential part of everyone's childhood. For me personally, eating Gato Pima reminds me of the breakfast that I used to have with my family on Sundays. During the week, we didn't have time to get together and have breakfast. So on Sundays, we would all have a special breakfast and we would always eat Gato Pima. This dish was meant to be had with hot black tea, but I am a cold coffee kind of girl, so. <sighs> we picked this up this morning at my coffee shop. And when I say we, I mean me and Asha. <laughs> I've constructed two versions of this. One is my baguette with butter and cheese, and the other is I just wanna try it on its own. I love that the dough of this is lentils. It's also really hot because it's out of a deep fryer, so. Let's play What's in My Bookshelf while we wait for it to cool down. I just finished reading this graphic novel called CQ and it's by Kristen Radke about American loneliness. Absolutely 
amazing. Leaving a link in the description, I recommend it to everybody. This is a bit of a flex, but this is a diorama of a bookstore that I made and I had so much fun. I didn't realize that miniatures is something that I'm passionate about, but it is. It's a candle that I bought in Tepotzlan in Mexico. This is all wax. Have you ever seen a candle more beautiful? I haven't. I'm thinking it's time to try this now. Let's start with the sandwich. Baguette sandwiches, while delicious, they're like a lot to commit to. Do you know what I mean? I think I'm gonna do the open-faced. Oh my God. Where has this been all my life? Okay, I am absolutely adoring this dish. It is so different from anything I've ever had. There are two things that I would say have brought me success in making this. Number one, if you wanna make this, you need to let your lentils soak in water overnight. When people say give it a couple of hours, no, no, no. You need at least eight hours, I think, for success in whizzing dried lentils. And number two, I did have to add just a little bit of water to kind of get the blender going, but I did maybe add a little too much water. So then I had to add a little bit of flour and then I got kind of the right consistency. It was just a bit too wet in the beginning. A cool thing about this dish as well is you can make a bunch of them, put them in the freezer and then reheat them in like the air fryer when you're ready to eat them again. So it's kind of one of those breakfasts that you can plan ahead for, which is nice. I am fully impressed, totally obsessed. Can I do one more rhyme? Obsessed, impressed. And I'm well dressed, bye. <laughs>My name is Anton Kroma. I am originally from Albania. I would like to share an Albanian breakfast called Pshesha Mechumsht. It loosely translates to bread with milk. The term Pshesha in Albanian is the act of breaking bread with your hands into bite-sized pieces and mixing it with some sort of liquid, like a broth or a stew. And in this case, it's mixed with milk to make it uh, more suitable for breakfast. It also has a little bit of sugar added to it, so it, it is sweet. It tastes like drinking sweet hot milk, but um, more hearty, and you have to chew it. Bread is very important in Albanian culture. We have it pretty much for every meal. Uh, my mom used to boil milk every morning to pasteurize it, so that was also available, and it was easy to mix the two as breakfast. It reminds me of those times as a kid going out and playing with my friends, getting dirty, exploring, and it ma makes me remember my childhood fondly and it makes me feel like a kid for a brief moment. This is the first time that we've had Albania on the channel, which is very exciting. And I think it's also exciting that this dish poses the question, what do you do first? The cereal cereal or milk. In this instance, I did the milk first and then I put the bread in, but I don't feel like I would have done that if it was like anything else. Kind of tastes like French toast. It's like really comforting. It kind of reminds me of something that you might make to like make you feel safe and warm. This dish also is really reminding me of the milk bread dish, only in this instance, the milk was separate and you put salt and pepper in it and then you dipped the bread into the milk. Kind of interesting how this type of meal is common in, around the world, in a way. <laughs> Do you guys have anything in your cultures like this of milk and bread together? The bread becomes very soft very quickly. So all of my rab rambling and rattling on has now produced like, the bread has absorbed all of the milk. And it might, I feel like maybe it's like a little too soft now. Maybe I should have toasted it a little bit more so it had more structural integrity. Either way, pretty good, pretty comforting, definitely pretty different. <laughs> I'm Gabriella and I'm from the island of Jamaica. Today, the dish I'd like to share with you is Akian saltfish with fried Johnny cakes. 
Aki and saltfish or salted cod is a delicious breakfast dish consisting of a fruit called aki. Aki is a yellow fruit that is always cooked and served in a savory fashion. It's served with a fried dumpling dough called Johnny Cakes, as well as fried plantain, and if it's in season, a slice of avocado, though down here we call it pear. It looks a bit like scrambled eggs, but definitely does not taste at all similar. I love aki and saltfish. It's a fresh and savory breakfast that always satisfies. Aki and saltfish is actually the national dish of Jamaica and is very special to us. It's something I and many other Jamaicans grew up eating every Sunday, along with other breakfast foods such as callaloo, round down mackerel, and breadfruit. Johnny cakes were actually originally called journey cakes uh, because they were made for long journeys. Saltfish was very popular back when refrigeration was actually an issue and aki itself was brought over from Ghana during slavery times. So all of these came together and created our national dish. Even now, every Sunday, my family either makes it ourselves or sends my dad out to get it at the local cook shop. It's something I remember my grandmother making always and reminds me of home. Even when I was living in the US for university, I used to make it with canned aki and it always used to connect me back to my roots. Aki and saltfish is a beloved dish here and it's simple to prepare. It's very mild and delicious. I hope you try this and enjoy a piece of Jamaica. I feel like this plate looks pretty as a picture. The ackee does look like scrambled eggs. I'm very curious to try this. I've never had anything like this before. Whoa, it's like, kind of sweet, kind of creamy. I, and I wonder if my mind is playing tricks on me because I'm like, it looks like scrambled eggs that the texture is feeling like scrambled eggs, but wow, this is amazing. I have worked with saltfish before because I did a snack video where I made Jamaican saltfish fritters. So this wasn't my first rodeo with the fish. I knew about boiling it. That, that's how you kind of get rid of the extra salty taste. Mm. I got plantains for this episode. I'm excited. Okay, I've got my Johnny Cakes. <laughs> it's good. I mean, look, it's fried bread. I'm not trying to play favorites, but this, uh, this might be one of my favorite breakfasts <laughs> I've had in a while. If you live near a Caribbean or African grocery store and can get your hands on these ingredients, do it. So good. When I decided to do this breakfast episode, I got very excited and it's actually going to be, I think like four episodes. So there are more coming because I just kept being like, yes, oh my God, yes, this all sounds so exciting. That being said, if there is a breakfast that you really wanna see, leave a comment or send me an email and let's try to get it in. In the meantime, I'm leaving you with these two other really fun videos to get your morning started, a group breakfast that all of us on the channel did together and a coffee episode. I feel like that all works out, right? I will see you all in my next video.